Well, hello and welcome to Friday Night Live. I am Pastor Daryl and I'm joined by um, Lady Tammy and I'm so glad to be here on tonight. We thank you for being here. So come on in the room, share it, tell somebody we are on, come on in the room tonight. Not singing the song, but come on in the room tonight that we um, can share what God has given us, what we've been talking about for the last three weeks, discipleship. So make sure that we are sharing tonight. I want to shout out to um, Elder Lorraine that's on and um, Sheree, Teacher Sheree is on and our daughter in love, Jessica, is on. Share, share, share. Tell somebody that Winning in Prayer Friday Night Live is on tonight. A few announcements. Remember the schedule is uh, Winning Wednesday Bible Study at um, 8 p.m. right here on the Facebook page shown on all of our social media platforms uh, all with TV, Facebook, and YouTube, and sometimes Instagram and Twitter if you have those. We're on there. So our schedule no is... Twitter. No, no Twitter? We're on, on Twitter. Twitter, yes. So we're always on all of those. You can find us on all of those platforms. Soon we'll be even having a podcast, so we'll let you guys know about that. We're preparing for that. So please, please make sure that you keep that in mind. And then Friday night, of course, Friday night live. And then on Saturday, Momentum Church, we are over there on Saturday at 7 p.m. Uh, revival, revival time, revival. We talked about refreshing our relationship in January. Now we're going into a revival. So revival is April 25th through the 29th. The um, theme is anchored. So you can run with that and see what you think about, you know, what you think about that. Um, and then we'll let you know, we have some dynamic speakers I'm that will be I'm speaking I'm on those uh, five nights. Myself and Apostle will be speaking at that time. So April 25th, through the 29th, it is a five-day revival, Monday through Friday. So there will be no Friday Night Live that night. I know you guys are disappointed. But we'll be, we'll, some, well, Apostle, that's your night, Friday night. So you'll see Apostle on Friday night. My night is Tuesday night. And then also the virtual six-hour prayer event. I'm excited about that. May 14th, it is from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. <clears throat> Eastern Standard Time. We will be on about uh talking about new beginnings but also praying we got some dynamic people that are coming on women that are coming on with that wow. you'll see the flyer please it's make sure that big. you share the it's flyer it's going to be a big event the uh revival as well as the um the virtual uh six hour event so we are doing some exciting things with winning in prayer so make sure that you have liked the page you're following not just liking but following us because we have some things coming up we see you see the announcement today. We put up the podcast is coming soon. So Friday Night Live itself is going to have a podcast. So we'll let you know about that. Whip TV is out there. Yes, anyone that yes, um yes. <laughs> anyone that is interested in being part of Whip TV, if you're a chef, if you're a comedian, if you're a fitness person, if you have an entertainment show, if you have a talk show, we are waiting for you to be on Whip TV with us. So Whip TV runs 24 hours a day. It is on Roku. You will always have Christian broadcasting on that channel. So if you're up at four, if you're up at three, it is on. Go to your Roku and um, download the Whip TV app and you will see that. So thank you again for being with us. And we're ready to get started. Uh, tonight, we're talking about continuing to disciple We've been in discipleship series uh, for five weeks now, uh, five Fridays. So this is the last Friday. We'll hit you with something else on the next coming weeks. But right now we are going to finish up. You got questions, ask them on tonight. I just want to put a little emphasis on how excited we are about the Friday Night Live yes, podcast. Excited. So we're going to be launching that in uh, the next couple of weeks. Yes. Also, we are working, you know, she just spoke about, um, the different uh, kind of shows that we're looking for. And we're working on bringing comedy to uh, Winning in Prayer TV. Right. In fact, I have several calls scheduled on tomorrow to uh, try to finalize some things with a couple of comedians. So yes. listen, we're, we're trying to be cutting edge over here. Right. Uh, we don't want to sit down and rest on our laurels. We want to continue to uh, push forward and broaden the horizon and, uh, uh, broaden what we're able to bring to the kingdom of God. Yes. And so listen, on tonight, let's start by tell everybody what city and state you are watching from. Yes. Type your city and state in the comment. Yes. Um, we are excited tonight to uh, 
continuing this series. This is the last of the series, continuing mm -hmm. in discipleship. And I pray that, pray that you are excited yes. as much as we are. Uh, my first scripture is coming from uh, Second Second Thessalonians. Yes. And I was really excited when I was preparing for this. Uh, I wanted to look at, Paul is one of my favorite New Testament uh personalities yes. especially when it comes to establishing churches yes. raising up leaders uh, uh establishing uh uh churches and uh teaching training releasing uh then traveling uh three missionary journeys mm -hmm. to go back and uh, <laughs> uh raise up to teach and train and release mm -hmm. he's just my favorite man in the new testament when it comes to uh establishment right. and so in uh Second Timothy, the fourth chapter, uh, Paul is literally talking to Timothy. And I just want to read the first verse to start off, and, and then I'm going to let uh, Lady Tammy jump in. But here Paul is uh, praying for Timothy as well as instructing him. Mm -hmm. It says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Now, the following verses, we won't get into that, but this begins... Uh, Paul's prayer for Timothy, as well as his instructing him. So I got two things that I want to start off telling you on tonight. You need to be willing to continue to pray for the one that mm -hmm. you're discipling mm -hmm. and the one that's discipling. Let mm -hmm. me tell you something. You need to make sure that you are connected to somebody that's going to continue to pray for you, mm -hmm. not just when you need it, not just when you're trying to break through and get the Holy Ghost and begin your walk with God, mm -hmm. but you need somebody, you need the advantage of having somebody that's going to pray for you from the moment you come to God until. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you again, let me, let me, let me say that again. Mm -hmm. You as the one that's discipling need to be willing to pray for that person that you are discipling on an ongoing basis. And this is what's going on here with Paul and Timothy, he is continuing to disciple. Paul is in jail, yes. but he's continuing to disciple Timothy. Difficult situation. And, and from a difficult, from a from a very uh, a trying mm -hmm. situation, yes. he is continuing. Mm -hmm. And I want to highlight that he is not in a, a convenient circumstance. Right. He is not in a convenient situation he here, yet he is continuing to disciple this young man, Timothy. Mm -hmm. So I want to encourage you on, on tonight. You need to be willing to continue. Barring your situation, your circumstance, barring it being convenient yes. for you, you need to be willing to continue to disciple, continue to pray mm -hmm. when it's not convenient. And the one that's being discipled, you need to make sure above all, that you're connected to somebody that's going to pray for you, even through their difficult situation. Mm. And as we proceed down and through these verses, I'm going to show you why it's so important to be connected to somebody that's going to pray for you. So John 15, 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Bear fruit. This is Jesus speaking with the disciples and that your fruit should remain that remain that whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you mm -hmm. he's saying i didn't just choose you to come sit at the church just some random choice right i didn't just come choose you i didn't choose you just to come sit my, i didn't my, my. choose you just to uh take it all in and eat it and yes. then not give it back out he said i chose you to go and bear fruit That's so good. and as you bear fruit as you show people how to be disciples in Christ, then your fruit should remain. That means they were they remain as a disciple and then they mm -hmm. give it out. They go. So it is not just for us to hold on you to say what. That, can you say that again? He didn't just choose choose what? He didn't choose them just to keep it to themselves. Oh, he didn't so choose good. them just to uh, eat so it good. all up and uh, sit here and I'm going to sit on it. I'm not going to give it out. Mm -hmm. He chose them to go so that they could bear fruit and give the word and that others could disciple others. Yes. And they kept going. We're talking about continuing to disciple. Last mm -hmm. week we talked about the... Um, uh, impact of discipleship so him teaching the disciples that was the impact and then now he's saying 
I chose you. Now I need you to go and I need you to bear fruit. I don't need you to just sit on it. So our job as the discipler is to disciple, continue discipling, and then your disciple disciple someone else. Glory no matter where God. they are, how where they are in their walk, they have to have someone that will teach them. Hallelujah. And then you yourself as a disciple, the person that disciples, you also must continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So you can't just stay you stagnant the either. Discipler. Discipler. <laughs> the discipler just can't stay stagnant. They have to continue to grow. Yes. So yes, I just okay. I, I love that verse. Verse verse two, first uh, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter four, verse two. I'm taking you somewhere. Mm -hmm. It says, "Preach the word, mm -hmm. be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine." Mm -hmm. So he tells Timothy, above all else, no matter what you do, preach the, preach word. the word, continue preaching, oh, continue God. teaching. And again, I want you to I want you to think of the backdrop that this is it's, this is coming from a man that's in jail. Mm -hmm. Yet he takes the Still time he deems it necessary mm. to write to this young pastor mm. and tell him, don't stop preaching the word. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about continuing in discipleship on tonight. Yes, I want to. I want you to make My sure God. that you walk away tonight with. How important it is that for you as the as the one that's discipling, mm -hmm. and and how even even of more important the one that's being discipled, you cannot stop. Can't. If Paul did not uh, allow his circumstances to stop him from writing, how can you, when you're free and able to do the work of the Lord? He says, above all. Preach the word. Continue making disciples. You can't allow because My I'm goodness. in jail. You have to continue making disciples. Above all else, he says, preach the word. It's necessary and it's important. And he tells he tells uh, Timothy to do it in season. Right. Do it when they want to hear. It. Right. He said, uh, 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 do it when they when they appear to be listening. Mm -hmm. Then he also says to do it at, well, at, out of season. Right. When it appears they don't want to hear, and even when it appears that they're going the opposite, opposite way, way of what you're preaching and teaching and, 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 and what you're trying to do to disciple right. and be an example. He says do it in season and out of season. Mm -hmm. Do it in season. Now. He says reprove, which means to reprimand, to chastise, uh, to correct. He says reprove, rebuke, which is the same thing. And then he says to exhort. Why am I? Why am I exhorting? And I want you to know, well, I'm, I'm exhorting to encourage mm -hmm. the one that I'm. I am. Dis, I'm discipling. Exactly. Yes. And I want you to pay attention to that word reprove and that word rebuke. There's that prefix R E on the be, on the beginning, mm. which means again and again and again. Repeat. So Paul is telling Timothy, you're gonna have to teach these people mm -hmm. again and again and again. Yes. He he says again My God. and again and again. And then he says, and then that the verse lets you know that I'm doing this because you don't want them to go backwards. Right. So you have to continue the discipleship process. Mm -hmm. He says, reprove, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Yes. You have to do this. You have to do this mm -hmm. and not get tired. My Glory God. to God. Hallelujah. Mm. You have to do this My and goodness. not get frustrated. I got to reprove. I got to rebuke. Mm -hmm. I got to exhort. With all long, and I, I love how it says all, all long suffering because right. you don't know what you're going to be dealing with when you're trying to make a disciple. Mm -hmm. So he says, with all long suffering. Mm -hmm. I hope you hear me on tonight, right. and I feel the spirit of God on tonight. Yes, he said, with God. all long suffering, Thank you, Lord. all long suffering, you can't get tired. Right. Glory to God. The one that's making disciples, if he don't get tired, the one that's being disciple. Cannot be, get cannot be, cannot be, cannot get tired. Right. Why? Because you also are required to make disciples. She right. said, she she meant the description. Let your fruit, uh, bear, uh re remain. bear fruit and let it remain. Yes. How is it going to remain if you get tired? Mm -hmm. 
How does it remain if you get tired? How does it remain if you get frustrated? How does it remain if you give up and walk away? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you again. He says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering again Mm -hmm. and again and again. Over and over and over. You got to teach these principles over and over and over. You're going to have to teach sound doctrine over and over and over. You're going to have to encourage that one that wants to give up again and again. Over and over. You cannot get tired. Hallelujah. So uh, 2 Timothy uh, 4 and 17, it says, "But the, now this is Paul, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. Now, we're talking about in my scriptures. Yes. <laughs> we're talking about a heart. We're talking about him being in a difficult situation and he still, he continues to disciple. He continues to give the word. He continues to keep writing and saying to Timothy. Now, Timothy was a young pastor. Timothy probably wasn't really <clears throat> sure what am I going to do with these people? Well, how, I, how, how will I deal with them? And teach them. And Paul, in his difficult situation, because we talked about this earlier in discipleship, there may be some difficult situations as a discipler. He continued to work. He continued to disciple. He continued to write. He even in the next few scriptures, he said, oh said, "Bring my, uh, bring my books to me. Bring my stuff to me, so that I can continue to teach." We're talking about imprisoned. We're talking about can't get out. We're talking about uh, shackled. We're talking about maybe one meal a day, maybe no meal a day. And back then, they had to have somebody bring them a meal. So he may not even have had a meal. So we're talking about tough situation, continuing to disciple through our little problems that we have if you're not in jail you don't have the same problem that paul had if you're not uh, outside you don't have the same problem as paul had so we have to continue through our problems what we think are so magnified and what we think is so big we have to continue in this and we have we have a job to do the word said i chose you to go and bear fruit not to sit on it not to not give it out but to go and give it so we got to continue to teach faith we got to continue to teach prayer we got to stay consistent in prayer and we got to remember how important it is to stay connected with christ we cannot just do what we want to do we got a responsibility we're not just responsible for ourselves now in verse two i told you the importance of why we simply can't get tired while we can't get frustrated number verse three Mm -hmm. is going to show you why verse three says for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine Mm. but after their own love shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears Mm -hmm. now verse three literally tells us the reason why we do what we do and again i want to put emphasis on on uh the the fact uh of the one that's making disciples have to resist the temptation to turn that person a loose in three months. <clears throat> I want to say that again. The one that's making disciples have to resist the temptation. And I don't know why our endurance isn't, uh, 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 it's not even 90 days, three right. months, they get saved three months. We turn them a loose. Mm. I want I want you to I want you to pay attention to this. The one that's making disciples has to resist the temptation mm-hmm. to turn that person to loop. My goodness. The one that's being discipled also has to resist the temptation to say, I am now grown up. Mm-hmm. I can stand on my own. Mm-hmm. What have you learned in three months? My how God. much how much have you grown in three months? Mm-hmm. How much growth could possibly happen in three months? Mm-hmm. How much how much maturity? has happened in three months. Mm. You know, we go from being saved to three months later. Now we're called to preach. <laughs> I'm a bishop. I'm an overseer. How? Right. How? Right. How? And, you know, we want to be leaders, but we've never followed anybody. Mm. And it never is never going to work like that. My I want goodness. you to understand on tonight, there's a commitment 
from the that's needed from the one that's making disciples, mm -hmm. but there's also a commitment from the, the one that's disciple. being disciple. Right. It, it it it's 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 literally. I want you to understand you you cannot stop so quick. We cannot we we, we don't grow that quick. Glory to God. Here Paul is, uh, uh, praying for. And instructing this man of God, mm. what if what if Timothy had gone away from the relationship with Paul because he went to jail? What if no no no? Just what if he would have gone away from the relationship? Mm -hmm. He never would have received these instructions. Mm -hmm. And this is some of this is our problems. We leave relationships before we get the instructions that's needed for the purpose. For our lives, My goodness. God does. God doesn't just just randomly connect you to people. It's for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to understand: you got to resist the temptation to to turn folks loose. And the one that's being disciple has to resist the temptation to wow. say, "I'm not grown. I can do it on my own." The Bible said. The Bible says that that verse three said that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Why, why, well, why are they not going to endure? If you haven't endured in continuing to teach them again and again and again and again, how can they endure sound doctrine? There's a, there's a different type, type of, of endurance that's needed. Anybody, anybody can do this thing for a week. Right. Anybody can do this thing for a couple of days. Right. But how do you how do you look how does your life look when the rubber really meets the road mm. listen let me let me be very transparent here in 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 talking about this uh uh this thing called called discipleship mm -hmm. for the last couple of weeks and then when i was preparing today i'm gonna be very very transparent with you when we were pastoring in ohio i had a minister that i pulled very close and began to pour into uh, he, I taught him how to do bi uh, uh, Bible study, Sunday school. Sunday school, I mean, uh, all the way to the point where I didn't even have to sit in on Sunday school. I could stay in my office mm -hmm. and come out afterwards. I met with him weekly to, mm -hmm. to, to, to teach and to train and to help him move forward. Mm -hmm. Well, this individual decided that it was time for him to be the pastor, mm -hmm. him and his, him, he and his wife. Tore our church up overnight. Mm -hmm. Tore our church up overnight. We were pushing almost 100 people. Literally overnight, our work was gone. Mm -hmm. Our work was gone. I remember, listen, let, let, let me tell you another thing. When we first started the church, because I want you to understand, discipleship costs. When we mm -hmm. first when we first started the church, I believe we had four or five cars in front of the, in front of the house. We went... When we started the church, we ended up with no car. <laughs> no car. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember having to have one of the members take me to the church mm -hmm. one week. Maybe two. Mm -hmm. Discipleship costs. Mm -hmm. But getting back to what he done, he tore our church up overnight. Mm -hmm. All of my all my sweat equity, all my work that I put in, all my wife's sweat equity, our kids. We worked hard to build that church. Man. Overnight is gone because somebody else thinks that they could do the job better. Mm. I remember meeting with this man. And for whatever reason, on that day, I was able to stand up and walk away. Now, had that been an hour earlier, maybe an hour later, if it would have been the, the, the day before or the day after, y'all probably would be raising me would have had to raise me some bail money. Mm. But for whatever reason, at that, that moment, God graced me enough to be able to walk away. Mm -hmm. I'm saying all this to say, discipleship, it costs. Mm -hmm. For the one that's making disciples, mm -hmm. there's a cost involved. Mm -hmm. you, don't get in this, you don't get into this because it looks good. Right. You don't get in this because it feels great. Right. You don't get in this because, there, there's, because it looks glamorous. There's a cost involved. Right. And so Paul, so Paul is telling him, listen, if you don't do what you, you're supposed to do, the cost 
are the souls. If you if you get tired, if you get frustrated, these souls are at stake. Mm -hmm. It said that they're not going to endure sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Thank Why you. is it because they're going to? I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm going to take two. It mm -hmm. says that they have itching ears, which means that they're going to uh, uh, bring teachers to themselves to teach them according to what they desire, according to their taste. Not according to what the what the word of God is saying, not according to the doctrine that they have been taught, right. but according to their likes, according to their desire. Right. Do you see what's going on here? Mm -hmm. If you don't continue doing what you're supposed to do, if you get tired, if you get frustrated, their ears, their liking, and the Bible tells us to be careful what we hear. Yeah. The Bible tells us to be careful how we hear. Now their hearing has changed. Be you can't, you can't, you can't be frustrated. You can't get tired. Mm. And I see y'all ain't doing much comment, and that's good right now. Because I mean you're really listening. <laughs> but but I want you to I want you to understand. You cannot get tired, you cannot get frustrated because there's souls at stake. So I want to speak to the part about having many facets of discipling. Mm. So we talked about um uh talked about the the angst of it, you can get angry, get upset with it in the mm -hmm. midst. And then you can talk about there's the suffering part of it. It is. Um, there is um, being upset with the person that you are um, discipling because they're doing something else and, you know, you're continuing to talk and you're like, it's so many facets to this discipling. It is. It's so many faces to it that you have to be careful that you're not drawn away with their issues. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you are rooted and grounded in the word so that they are not um, the influence, more of the bigger influence over you. Oh so you, if you're going to take on someone that you're going to disciple, please make sure that you are rooted yourself. Please make sure that you have a the relationship um, your relationship is stable with Christ because their influence could take over uh, what you, you know, could take over your in more, more of your influence, you being influenced by them. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful about their situations mm -hmm. because there's going to be people that you're disciple that, you know, come out of the world and they're not really sure about their walk with Christ. And then they start talking and then you start thinking like, well, I'm dealing with the same thing. And then, you know, uh, people that have been delivered from drugs and alcohol, they tell you not to go back to the places you were in. Mm -hmm. Uh, because you might fall, you may want to wait until um, mm -hmm. you are, you know, completely rooted and grounded in the word before you do that. So please make sure that when you are discipling yourself, that you are grounded um, in the word because you don't want their influence, what they're complaining about, what they're going through to take over your life. So it has many facets and many faces to it. Suffering is part of it. You need to let the person know that you're discipling. Yes, there is going to be some suffering moments. Yes, there is going to be some times that you may not see God, hear God, feel God, taste God. He may not be anywhere around. He may not be talking. He may not be there. You may not feel <clears> him, <throat> but you have to make sure that they understand this is part of the walk. Now, does it happen all the time? Of course not. It does not happen all the time, but you as the discipler, you need to be strengthened. You need to stay rooted and grounded in the word so that their life doesn't overshadow yours or overtake yours. You know, you know, the, the Bible says that they're that they're it says the time will come when they will not endure mm. sound doctrine. Now we've been hearing about the end of the world, we've been hearing about the rapture forever. Right. And I can tell you uh in 1999 when we were going into 2000, I was praying with one eye open, one eye closed. <laughs> because we had been so much emphasis had put, been put on the year 2000 and the rapture and all that. But but let me say this, after you hear things so so long, you sent you you tend to lose uh, uh, sensitivity to it. Correct. You know it, it, the importance of it uh, begins to wear off. But the Bible says that that, that the time will come when they won't endure sound doctrine. Now, I if I want you to understand, if there hasn't been a continual uh, uh, receiving uh, and teaching of the Word of God, mm -hmm. you will not be able to endure. Right. Right. The Bible lets us know that their that their their ears begin to dictate 
what they wanted to hear. Their desires mm-hmm. begin to dictate the kind of words that they want to hear. And let me say this. Let me preface this by saying this. You know, speaking in tongues, it's one thing. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Speaking in tongues, being impressed by somebody speaking in tongues, pro- prophecy, all those things has their place. Mm-hmm. It's the word of God that makes the difference. Mm-hmm. It's the word of God that makes the difference, mm-hmm. and we are in a we are in a day and age where people are impressed by folks speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, they're impressed by folks prophesying. Mm-hmm. You know what? If you if you're prophesying, but you can't teach me, there's a total imbalance. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're speaking Very in tongues and you never have an inter- and never never have an interpretation, there's an imbalance. Listen. I'm prophetic. I can, I, you know, I'm prophetic. The Lord uses her uh, uh, prophetically at times, but neither one of us lead with that. Nope. Why? This ministry is built on prayer and the Word of God. Mm-hmm. If I can't, if I, if you, if I can't move you by prayer, and if I can't move you by the mm-hmm. Word of God, mm-hmm. my being prophetic, telling you what I feel and what I sometimes what I see, that that that, that that's not going to get the job done. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get the job done. Mm-hmm. And this is why our ears start itching mm-hmm. when we haven't endured mm-hmm. sound doctrine. My God. We oh, haven't endured you. sound doctrine. What do you mean we haven't endured? When yes, when you haven't endured enough or stood enough for the word of God to break your will My and God. for you to Hallelujah. exchange your will for Thank his you will, Hallelujah. for you to say, God, you're right, I'm wrong. Yes. You're not going to endure. Mm-hmm. You, the, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. He thought it not robbery to be, be uh, equal with God. But he took upon him the My form God. of a servant. Mm. See, there has to be a change. My God. There has to be a change in, in, yes. in the way you think, in the way that you do, in the way that you move. Mm-hmm. You, but you won't endure unless there's been a continual. You need to be under a continual teaching Hallelujah. of the word of God. And I'm not just talking about being at church. Right. Listen. I listen. I listen to the word on my phone. Mm-hmm. I listen to the word on my laptop. Mm-hmm. I listen to the word. Uh, I still have a couple of uh, MP3 players that I listen to the word on. Mm-hmm. You have to. You have. You literally Hallelujah. have to bathe yourself, your mind, yes. your will, your emotions in the word of God, and I'm talking about daily. Mm-mm. Daily, you have to let the word circumcise. Yes, you have to let the word take out and cut out. What is not like him? Oh and the only way you're going to do that is that you're going to have to stay in the word. You're going to have to stay in prayer. You're going to have to do fasting. I know we don't talk about fasting that much, but this ministry believes in fasting. Mm. So you're going to have to. That's what it takes. I can tell you from personal experience, that's what it takes. It cuts some things out, hallelujah, of some stuff that you thought you were and how bad you thought you were and, you know, prideful and, you know, being evil and malicious and deceitful. All of those things have to be cut out. So the word circumcises the heart. So we have to have a renewed mind and a circumcised heart. And you won't remain, you won't stay grounded unless you have, hallelujah, unless you have those things. You have to have the word. Uh, Second Timothy uh, also talks about uh, studying, showing thyself Mm -hmm. approved in the word. Approved means that somebody puts a stamp on it. That the Lord is saying, yep, you're ready. You're right. You study enough. You know my word. You know how to guide others. We have to make sure, thank you, God, that we stay in the word. I know that we talk about it. It may be old fashioned for some, and you know, it may be like, oh, well, it doesn't take all that. It does take all of that because you won't survive. You won't make it without staying in the word and in prayer. You have to do it. So staying rooted and grounded yourself again as the disciple learner is going to keep you from being overtaken and life debilitating you because you're discipling other people. They have to come out of their debilitating states and you can't be in one and they be in one too because it's not going to work. So you have to be able to uh, show them, yes, life had messed me up. Life messed me up, but I am here. This is what I did. 
Take them step by step. Take them by the hand. Show them the scripture. Write it down for them. Say, hey, this is what I did to come out of my situation. And this is what I want to show you. But you got to be able to stand as a disciple. You can't give up. The issue with the church is, is that, again, we give up too soon and too quick. As soon as they think, as soon as you think they're not getting it or they're not listening, they are, but they, they don't know how to... Um, to take in the word as much as you are. They're like sponges at this point. So you have to make sure that you are ready to stand and ready to stay in there. Yeah, 2 Timothy 2, 24, mm. it says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing the... Let me say that again. Thanks it says God. that the servant of the Lord must be gentle... Apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance, you got to be patient and kind. Yes. And when it appears it's not working, you still have to do it because you never know when God's going to grant that repentance. Yes. You never know when they're going to come through. You never know. And then I like it where it says, uh, a peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And it, then he goes on and says, and that they may recover themselves Hallelujah. out of the snare of the devil Thank who are God. taken captive by him. Thank How do we Lord. recover ourselves? It's in Christ. Mm. We recover ourselves. It's in the recovery of ourselves. You know, listen, I want you to understand that life costs. Yes. It costs. It costs. It costs mental. It costs physical. It costs spiritual. The only way we're able to recover ourselves Jesus. is in Christ. Mm -hmm. have, have you ever felt like you've lost pieces of yourself? Have you ever felt like a situation took parts of you? The only way to recover that is in Christ. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Glory to God. Listen, listen. Some Hallelujah. of you right now have dealt with some situations when you were young that completely robbed you of everything that God had planned for My you. My God, help us, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Through a, through a molestation, through a bad, through a bad relationship, Thank through you, abuse, Thank the you, only Lord. way that we're, we're going to recover ourselves is, is, is in Christ. Mm. But the one that's discipling us can't give up. They got to be gentle. You can't let the situation yeah, dictate you. Recovery. Gotta be gentle. Mm. You got you gotta know how to teach, how to treat. Uh, uh, you gotta know how to lead. You gotta be you gotta be patient. You gotta you gotta be able to teach them. Yes. Why? Because you're you're literally leading them in the recovery of themselves. Yes. Everything that life has Correct. robbed from you before you came to Christ, yes. everything that the devil has taken from you before you came to Christ, you're literally leading them in a recovery mm. process. Hebrews 10, 36. That's good stuff. Hebrews 10, 36, it says, for you have need of endurance mm. so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Mm. The ultimate mm. promise is going to heaven, but the ultimate promise is on earth is that you'll have peace Glory to God. that you'll live in peace so you have to have endurance as the discipler we're talking about continuing disciple just continuing discipleship or continually in discipling but the main thing is is that we have to know that we have to endure we have to stand thank you for being here on tonight uh tanya hunter and my classmate shay i'm glad that you are here so thank you for being here but on tonight we want to remember that there is so many faces to the to this discipleship but the main one is that we need to be able to stand i know we talked about let's go all the way back to the beginning what is discipleship um what is it what is it how do i do it how do i uh keep going uh how do i impact the impact of discipleship i'm just going through my notes being a disciple uh what is it what is discipleship discipleship is accepting um first accept christ in our life physically let him take over physically and spiritually so we have to be prepared as the discipler and let our person know or persons know that they have to be they have to hang on i'm gonna hang on 
you hang on with me. Now, when again, when Jesus went out, when he came on the scene, he walked out and all he did was spoke and said, follow me. So when you open your mouth and tell someone about Christ, if they follow you, they are now your responsibility. So you cannot give up in your life. Yeah, I know it comes rocky and I know things happen and I know stuff doesn't go your way all the time, but you have to do the same as Jesus did. Even Jesus may have even gotten tired of the disciples. He said, hey, I'm going to pray. I'm going off to pray. I'm going to the mountain. Y'all stay here. I'm going over on the other side. You stay here because he needed to uh, get some other some direction. He needed to gather his, his strength, his thoughts. He needs to be in relationship with his father also. So we as a, the discipler, if you need a refreshing time, tell that person or that group, hey, I need a refreshing time. I'm not giving up on you, but I need to go and pray. I need to go and fast. And that is, again, how you stay um, like the energized bunny, you stay energized, you stay in endurance and you stay um, on, on the rock of the word. And that is um, very important when you do that, because then you're being a, a, a um, what I want to say, you're showing the other person that you're discipling. This is how you do it. You're giving them the roadmap. Pastor uh, Apostle said you're helping them recover and you are helping them recover and by showing what you do. The disciple, the person that disciples has, has to be ready at all times. So uh, the first chapter of Second Timothy, verse 11, it says, whereunto I am appointed a preacher mm. and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Thank you, Lord. I want you to understand on tonight, you have to know that you're called to this. Mm. And this calling is not, this calling is not, you know, be a prophet or an, or an apostle right. or an overseer. This call is for everybody. Mm -hmm. he, everybody that names the name of Christ mm -hmm. is called to make disciples. Yes. Now I know sometimes you know we get saved and we're just glad that we're saved, <laughs> glad that we're heaven bound, and we say you know I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna just ride this out. But that is not God's purpose for our lives. Mm -hmm. At the bare minimum, and, and I don't even know I sh if I should say it like that. You and I, whether we ever hold a mic or stand behind a podium, we are called to make disciples. Yes. You yes. are called. I know it's intimidating to try to talk to somebody about. I, I understand that. Been there, done that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But what I also want you to understand is I'm an introvert naturally. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to this 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 God thing, mm -hmm. oh, man, you, you're not going to beat me. My you're God. not going to beat me. There, you know, there was a time when I never would have thought of standing up in front of folks and declaring the word of God mm -hmm. or standing up in front of, uh, of a bunch of people uh, uh, singing, leading a worship song. Not this guy. Mm -hmm. But you know, you know, just like you know, Clark Kent went in the booth and come out super. That's what that's what this that's what this does for me. Mm -hmm. That's what this does for me. It changes me. I don't mind putting myself out there. It gives me the boldness that that I may not have naturally. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the stakes are so high. I understand that when I when I take the time to talk wow. to somebody about this thing that we that we call salvation, I'm literally snatching a soul from hell. Yes. So yes. you mean to tell me I can't I can't be willing enough to, to allow the Holy Ghost to infuse me, to, to enable me to stand and declare mm -hmm. what God has done in front of somebody? My God. Well, listen, there's, there's just no way. Mm -hmm. The stakes are too high. And see, that's why... Uh, that's why some of us are easy not doing it because we don't understand how how high the stakes right. are. Right. Your testimony literally can be what snatches somebody out of uh, of, of, of of the 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 grasp of the devil. Mm -hmm. It can literally be what 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 delivers that heroin My that heroin God. addict. My it God. can literally be what what delivers that prostitute. My God. It can literally be what what what. What heals mm -hmm. somebody mentally? Mm -hmm. right. You, but but we have to be willing to put ourselves out. We got to know that we're called to this. Mm. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. If if I wasn't a pastor, that I'm called to make disciples. And let me read verse twelve to you. It says, "For the which cause I also suffered those things, mm -hmm. suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is able to keep." 
that which I commit unto him against that day. You also have to understand that there is suffering attached to making disciples. Right. You don't get to do this and walk away that. unscathed. <laughs> you don't get to do this and walk away and not have any scars. There's a cost attached to making disciples. So since we're talking about uh, that, since you mentioned that uh, about suffering, it says Matthew 5, 10 through 11 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Are we going to stand with those? Are we going to stand after hearing that? Are we going to stay in with the with the group or the people that we are discipling? Are we willing to be reviled? Are we willing to be persecuted? Are we willing to be talked about? Are we willing to get in the muck and the mire and take a hit on our character? Are we willing? Are we willing to be assassinated by the church folks? Because that's they they the be, they the best assassinators. Um, they don't have to have a weapon, uh, a gun, a sword, or anything. But that mouth, the tongue, they are the best at assassinating people and their character. Are we willing to us uh, to take the assassination? Are we willing to take the hit? Are we willing to stay in? What kind of disciple are you going to be? What kind of person are you going to say, hey, you know what? I, If you need to go, I always use this as an example when I'm talking to pastor. Are, are you, if you need to go to AAA, then I'm going to AAA with you. If you need to go to the drug rehab and it's an outpatient, I'm going to take you and drop you off. And if that means I have to sit in there with you, that's what I'm willing to do. If you need to go to your um, therapist, if you need to go to your drug counselor, whatever you need to do, I'm willing to take a hit for you so that we can come out on the winning side together. Mm -hmm. Also in Galatians, um, Galatians 5, Paul said, I, I'm laboring with you. Mm -hmm. I'm laboring with you. I'm laboring like I'm having children. Now, of course, he's a man. He can't have children, but he's laboring. So we got to be able to labor. Labor means hard. Labor means to stay in there. Hard you know, work. everyone that has had a baby on here, that way they They've birthed you and they have to come through labor pains. They have to come through labor hurts. So we, Paul said he's laboring with them in Galatians 5. He's saying, I'm laboring with you and I'm glad to see. I'm, I'm laboring with you until you come to your full maturity in Christ. So we got to be able to stand those that are calling on the name of Jesus, those that are blood washed, those that are saying he's my savior, you're discipling, you got to be able to labor, stay in there until they are mature enough to stand on their own. So uh, 2 Timothy Hallelujah. chapter 2 verses 1 Thank through 3, God. it says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This is Paul's instruction to Timothy. Hallelujah. It says, and the things that thou hast heard Lord, of Lord, me name, among Jesus. many witnesses. Thank it says, you. the same commit thou to faithful men. Thank it says, God. everything you've heard, everything I've taught you, all the training that I've done, everything that you've heard, he said, I want you to now, in turn, commit that to faithful for men. Mm -hmm. So a disciple that's discipling, that's making disciples. Mm -hmm. A disciple that's making disciples, Remain. that's making disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it says uh, uh, commit that uh, to men uh, that's faithful mm -hmm. who shall be able to teach others also. My God. Do you see this? Mm -hmm. Paul tells Paul tells Timothy you can't give up, you can't get tired, you can't get frustrated. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you got to teach something to somebody that's going to teach something to somebody that's going to teach mm -hmm. something to somebody. My goodness. This is what discipleship looks like. Yes. It says that who shall be able to Hallelujah. teach others also. It says thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Listen, you're going to have to endure. Yes. There, there, you know what? There, people are depending on your endurance. Yes. You're the, the one that you're discipling. They're depending on your endurance yes. because they are going to have to disciple somebody. You're going to have to endure. You're, the, you're, the road you're going to have to endure. You're the road he, said, he, he says, uh, uh, commit this to faithful men. Then he says, you're going to have to endure. Can you endure on tonight? Mm -mm. Are you going to endure? Oh Whatever God. you're dealing with tonight, are you going to endure? Mm 
Yeah. I can tell you, does life get, get frustrating? Yes, it does. Hallelujah. I've been frustrated. Uh, been dealing, been filling with some. Uh, I told my wife, I, 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 I felt dry for the last week or so. Mm-mm. I feel dry for the last week or so. But let me tell you something, and I'm being transparent here. While I was sitting down on yesterday, I was doing, I was finishing up some work. Now I wasn't, I wasn't saying anything verbally, but I could hear my spirit, man, praying. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Paul told Timothy to, to stir up the gift on the inside. Yes. I wasn't praying verbally. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, God. But I Hallelujah. heard my spirit, man, praying. That's what we want to make And by the time mm. I finished, mm. everything that I was feeling was gone. Hallelujah. I felt a, I felt a new establishing. Mm-hmm. I felt a new encouraging. Mm. My, 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 my point of view had changed. My point of view about the thing that I was dealing with had totally changed. My God. My Glory God. to God. Thank you. Lord. See, this is why I'm saying you gotta, you better, you better be connected to somebody that can endure, mm. and then you better be able to endure. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Here Paul is teaching and training from jail oh my God. in a situation that would make most men say. I'm just going to sit here. Mm-hmm. Why would I write when I'm dealing with the situation? But it was, he knew that if he did not continue to disciple, mm-hmm. that these that, that, that the process would not continue. Mm-hmm. He said, I'm, I need you to commit this to faithful men that will in turn commit this to men that, that will make disciples, that will make disciples, that will make disciples. This is what the process of discipleship Looks like my God, glory my to God, God. glory to God. God, and you better have a prayer life that will outlast the difficulty that you're dealing with. My God, glory to God. So uh, that scripture I wanted to uh, about the labor, uh, it's Galatians four and nineteen. It says, "My little children, from whom I labor in birth again." Mm-hmm. Now again. he had already had talked to them again. and taught them again. already. He had all, just like the Corinthian church, he had taught them. He wrote two long books yes, to the Corinthian yes, church. Yes. He wrote the first one. Then he had to come back because he had to reprove, reprove, rebuke, rebuke, and praise. And now in Galatia, he had to do the same thing. Yes. He had to come back to them again. And it says again until Christ is formed in you, until you mature, until you see what I see, until you know your purpose, you have to go back again and again and again, continuing to disciple. That's what we're talking about on tonight. I am super excited about this series. Mm -hmm. I hope that you guys were too, but continuing to disciple. My job, my job as Tammy, not pastor, not lady Tammy, whichever one you want to call me. My job is to go ahead. Those people that call me for prayer, those people that have said, hey, can you answer this question for me? It is my job to stay put, to abide in God and not leave and not get uh, so frustrated that I'm like, nope, I don't want to do it anymore. Nope. I I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to answer the phone next time. I have to be able to be patient and long suffering and stay in love and not judgment with those that I am um, discipling. So staying, continuing to disciple this job never ends. Amen. Um, I want to, I want to point out something to you. Hallelujah. Because as I said earlier, there, there is, there is a cost to discipling. In the, in the fourth chapter of 2 Timothy, uh, let me see, it's the, the 10th verse. Paul, Paul, Paul tells Timothy that demons have forsaken me because he loved this present world. And he uh, not only left Paul, but he, just, he left and went uh, to Thessalonica. Mm-hmm. Uh, down at the 14th verse, it says, Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil, and the Lord reward him. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to his Where work, are you at? Where are you I'm, at? In, I'm in Second Timothy. Oh, okay. Second Timothy. Okay. Um, then over in that first, the first chapter of. Wait a minute. Let me see. Here. Mm, much evil of whom 
Yeah, Alexander the Coppersmith uh, uh, turned against Paul also. Then I want you to understand over in the first chapter of, of 2 Timothy, he says, Thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of mm. whom Phygelus and Hermogenes, they turned, they turned their backs on Paul. Mm -hmm. So I want you to understand, mm -hmm. Paul is paying a price for being a man that wants to make disciples. Now, let me read uh, 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 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter and verse 23 to you. Mm -hmm. It says, are they ministers of Christ? I speak not as a fool. I am more in labors, more Hallelujah. abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons, more frequent, in deaths. Oh, this is Paul talking about what he's been through. Mm -hmm. In making disciples, establishing church, all of that. It says, of the Jews, five times received our 30, uh, uh, 40 stripes, save one. It says, thrice I was beaten with rods. Mm. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and day I have been in the deep. In journeyings My often. God. In perils of water, meaning in danger. In perils of robber, in danger. In perils of my own countrymen, Faith danger. Cross, in God. perils by the heathen, danger. Mm. In perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, mm. in danger. It says in weariness, in pain, in painfulness, in watching often, meaning 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 he was fasting, uh, meaning he was praying. He's doing. He's fasting. He's doing he everything he's supposed he to do. found the necessary. Uh, a will to fast and pray mm -hmm. while going through some very trying situation. It right. says in hunger, I'm doing this while I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm not talking about a spiritual hunger, but he had that. Right. But naturally, right. he says, no I'm doing this and I haven't even eaten. Mm -hmm. In fastings often, in cold and in nakedness. And I love the 28th verse. It says, besides those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all, all the churches. The churches. Amen. So Paul is saying, I don't I don't been beat, I don't been robbed, I've been in all kind of dangers, been locked Church up. Turned on me. All mm -hmm. I don't have people turn their backs on mm -hmm. me while I'm trying to help them. Mm -hmm. And I have to do all of this while still taking care of the church. My God. While still making oh, disciples. Mm -hmm. I have to do this. And, and still help you when you get weary. My I have goodness. to do this and still help you when you get tired. I have to do this and still help you when you want to give up. Amen. I have to do this and still help you when you say you're not coming back to church. Man. When you say you you know uh, uh, you gonna you gonna go to another church. I have to do all of this when you when you feel like being saved. Mm -hmm. When you don't. Sometimes feel like another. Sometimes you know. Paul is saying I'm doing all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm dealing with the situation, situations right. myself. Right. Right. Discipleship costs. It does. Discipleship costs. Oh my God. Listen, on tonight, tell us your thoughts about discipleship. We, we, we've been teaching uh, all, all, uh, uh, a little more than an hour now. Now let's interact. Let's engage. Amen. What are your thoughts about discipleship? Mm -hmm. We've been teaching four, four weeks now, right? This is the fourth week? It's Four, fifth week, mm -hmm. four, fifth. We've been teaching a long time about discipleship. What are your thoughts? What What do you remember that we've taught? Uh, what does discipleship mean to you? Let's let's engage. Let's Man. engage. Man. So we have to continue to teach faith, continue to teach prayer, continue to show how important it is to stay in relationship with other saved folks. Mm -hmm. See, when you come out of the world, you are not... A, you should not um, be able to maintain those relationships outside the church. Mm -hmm. You should not be able to maintain those. Those people should say, oh, no, you acting different, so I'm going to walk away. Let those people go. Because if you do not let them go, you're not strong enough as a disciple 
to stay in those relationships, you'll be right back where you were. And you know, you've experienced some deliverance. Now, are you mature completely? No. Have you grown a little? Maybe, maybe you've learned something, but those relationships, they are no good to you. They always bring in drama. They're always negative. They're always saying what you can't do, what, who you, you know, who you think you are. Those are the relationships you have to drop as a disciple. A disciple has to make some sacrifices too. The person that's just discipling does not always, they have to make sacrifices too. But you as a disciple, you have to be willing to make this, um, make some sacrifices. And a lot of times your influence comes from your relationships, yeah. whether it be family, whether it be a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a sister, a brother, whatever. Those relationships, you are going to have to be willing to sacrifice those and tell them, hey, I'm different. I'm doing something different. I'm not there anymore. But you as a disciple know that there is some suffering and there is some sacrifices that you have to make. So you can't just be eating from the person that's discipling you and not making changes. You have to make changes too. But the discipler, the person that's doing the discipling, we have to be rooted and grounded in the word. You cannot let them, your, their influence overtake you. So tonight we talked about continuing to disciple. We hope these last four weeks that you have learned more about disciple. I, I hope that it answered some questions. I hope that it um, inspired you. Um, I want to say before before we before we end, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm hoping that you guys are going to comment. Mm -hmm. um, if you'd like to give on tonight, it's mm -hmm. it's Cash App, and because we never hardly mention it, no. it's Cash App Dollar Sign Winning in Prayer. If you no. want to give on tonight, it's Cash App Dollar Sign Winning in Prayer. So let's see what Shay is saying here. I love discipleship and I think it's very important. I love that I tune in tonight because there are moments when the frustration sets in. And as I was listening, it was a reminder of don't I quit. did of don't quit and endure. endure. I love Man. that. I love that. Man. I love that. Paul said he had to do it again. So we got to go back and do it do it again i love that. definitely stay in there shay i encourage you the Amen. lord has done some mighty Amen. mighty things for you so stay in there endure endure in prayer we'll pray with you we'll call it winning in Amen. prayer that's what we do so we'll be praying for you and your <clears throat> ministry i just i saw where you just came back from your missions trip i hope that it was successful oh, wow. um so yes stay in there you're definitely enduring you're definitely a light to some people and someone um, so stay there. I encourage you stay in the race, stay in the race. So how do you, so how do you think Paul felt when, uh, Demas and Alexander and Hermogenes and Philetus, uh, Philetus, uh, people he was pouring into and they turned on, him? they turned their back. We've been through that. Oh yeah. We've been through it. <laughs> but how, through do, how, do you, how do you think, how do you think Paul felt? How do you think he felt, uh, you know, if, 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 let me be honest again. Let me be totally transparent again. After we had happened what happened to us, it was hard for us to get our footing back up under us. Mm, it was hard to trust. It, it, it mean, it was it was hard to trust people again. It was just overall, it was just hard to get going again. Mm -hmm. I felt like spiritually, I felt like I've been punched in the gut. Mm -hmm. Um, I so I I'm saying this because. I want to bring some reality to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. This is not just about some character in the Bible, even though right. he experienced some things. We're talking about real life here. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand mm -hmm. discipleship. It costs. Mm -hmm. It's called. It, there, there's a cost attached to it. Mm -hmm. You're giving of yourself spiritually. You're giving of yourself mentally, sometimes uh, financially. There, there's an emotional investment. There's a sweat equity Ooh, investment. You know, sometimes they don't have a car. You have to pick them up for, for Bible study. You have to pick them up for for Sunday morning. Uh, uh, you have to, yeah, sometimes, yeah. Paying yeah, bills. Sometimes pay, pay, pay their bill uh, or bills. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so there, there's a cost that's involved. Mm -hmm. But what I, what I want you to understand is even though it was hard for us to get going again, the the importance of 
seeing a soul saved mm-hmm. is what is what pulled me back and got me going again. Mm-hmm. Wanting to see lives impacted by the word of God, wanting to see souls being being saved. So, so my thought on that is, mm-hmm. um, let me say this: our relationship with God it waned a little bit because of what had happened Mm -hmm. because we weren't fully prepared mentally um uh, for what what had happened and i don't think we ever even thought that that would have happened didn't nobody Um, and didn't have anybody to talk to. nobody was able to tell us you know this is what this might happen to you or you know no people saying just praying just pray about it some pastors and leader pastors are um uh, they don't want to share a whole lot for mm-hmm. some reason mm-hmm. i'm not really sure because they may be ashamed of what has happened in their pastoral ship um but we um uh, i mean i i can say i felt i was mad i was upset i'm just going to be honest i was mad and i was upset um i it took me a while to even get over that person um so I can imagine with Paul pouring in, pouring in, and then these people turn on them, and then they're they're even the the ones that are inciting for other others to come and kill him. He had to escape, mm-hmm. um, and that's how he ended up being shipwrecked because he had to escape and go another way. So it was um, for us, for me, I can say they for me, the exactly. It, um, it for me. It was a very hard situation to to think and wrap my mind around going back into ministry because people are people are people. Um, but I wanted people to understand that I we had been hurt, we had been uh, almost debilitated by that situation. So it was hard for me to say, "Yeah, let's go back in ministry." I know he was always thinking it, and I was thinking it too. But I'm like, I don't know about this, Lord. But then. This lesson and reading and getting grounded and maturing in the word, it made me know that, yeah, we were on the right track. So if I'm not attacked, if I'm not uh, someone saying something bad about me or whatever, then that means I'm not doing the will of God. So I am I'm standing in purpose now. I know my purpose. Um, And if and I pray that it will not happen that way again, that the Lord will give us signs before um, that that happens so that we can intervene because what happens is we lost the church we lost the members but then it wasn't our fault that they were lost they were scattered but we still had to ask god at a point to forgive us for those for that situation um we they weren't the sheep weren't scattered because of us they were scattered because of someone else and we didn't want that blood on our hands so we did have to ask but the lord was, to forgive there was still us a responsibility that there, we yes we had to have we were still responsible yeah. so there is again cost to discipleship cost the leading cost the pastor if you want if you think the lord is calling you to pastor um, you better ask somebody. You need to ask I mean, somebody. We, I mean, we've dealt with be. some things. You know, we've had we've had people tell us that we didn't we didn't we didn't we didn't look like we needed an offering. I, mm. I, mean, I don't really I don't really the at the church need to I don't want, I didn't understand it then and I still don't because I don't want you talking to me if, if you look broke down. I mean that ain't that ain't encouraging. That ain't enticing. Right. You know what I mean? But right. but 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 at the same time, how can you tell somebody that's doing everything that they that they're supposed to be doing that they're not worthy of 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 uh progressing? Because mm. you know, in, in in the middle in the middle of us uh, of our 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 uh pastoring there we moved from one house to another mm-hmm. and we had some people folks that didn't think we deserved that mm-hmm. yet i'm That's praying yet i'm praying for you mm-hmm. I'm, I'm fasting for you i'm in my word every day trying to make sure i have something to feed you and i don't deserve to do better. but they were growing too so but it wasn't they, just but, us but they growing. were growing they were getting they were new growing. houses they, they were, were getting growing. promotions some were starting businesses yeah i mean financially they were doing well they were growing and that, that, well, was, that was we're the not we're, of the ministry. Though. Yeah, we're not supposed to. Yeah. I've never I've never understood. That. We were supposed to, our job as pastors as we went, they went. Yeah. So yeah. as the head went, 
they're supposed to go. So again, you being a pastor, you want to go into ministry, those kind of things, please get with someone that is um that has endured some things, that seasoned. have grown, that are seasoned, that and are mature, that can share, that are willing to share. If they're not willing to share their bumps and they're not willing to share their mishaps and they're not willing to share those uh those things, that is not the person to be discipled by or even mentored by for the ministry. Mm -hmm. You need to be with someone, some people or a couple, whoever it is that they are willing to share. Hey, this is this is what's happened. This is how you do it. This is how you don't do it. Those kind of things. Um, you need someone to show you. Do not strike out and say that the Lord called you to pastor. Oh and my. then because you oh become my. responsible for those people mm -hmm. that are following you. And if you mess up and you're not mature, then you can't expect them to be mature because you're not as the head goes so do the people so be very careful when you're leading and you're saying god is calling you to pastor make sure that is your calling make sure that you are with someone that is mentoring you and ministering to you and pouring into you so that you are prepared for things to endure as paul did as we did um because we could have just you know said nope we don't want to do none of this we wouldn't even have been doing any of this if god hadn't intervened in our lives and put us back mm -hmm. in put us back on the right focus so please as a as a woman of god a man of god and you're listening don't strike out and say god has pa called you to pastor and you only been saved four or five months um i i say you need to at least be saved within the in five years or, or more um before you decide you want to strike out and pastor you have to be stable because you are responsible for the people that will yes. follow you. Yes, Shay. Very, very yes. much so. Very yes. much so. Yes. You need a season of training. Yes, Shay. Very, very, so. very, very important. So to be ready to disciple, you need to, again, you have to be able to be rooted and mature in God. Yeah. Paul I said, mean, I we, come to I mean, you we, again. I mean, we've been, we've been knocked down. Mm -hmm. But through the grace of God, we were able to get back up. Man. Nothing, and I'll, nothing you know, and I'll, and we, 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 we Nothing was going to stop us from being saved. But pastoring? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It had to be. It's the will of the Lord. Let me just say that. Wow. It's, it's the will of God because we, I I had decided yeah. that we weren't. Um, but that's not the will yeah, of God. Some, yeah. That was not his will. There was, that was, there was, some, there was some doubt there. Yes. But, yes. But again, again, you know, the grace of God, mm -hmm. the grace of God, where mm -hmm. he will, well, he will help you through your most difficult time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some have some have written us off, mm -hmm. but when, when but when the call of God is there, mm -hmm. when the call of God is there, thank you, Lord. It makes a difference. Thank that's you, why. Lord. That's why is that that scripture I read. You better know that you called this. You better know that you built for this. Yes. <laughs> you better know that you. You know what? I want you to understand. I I think for any leader that's 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 worth that that that's worth anything, you're going to be betrayed. Yes. You're going to be Sorry. betrayed. Why? Know that. Christ was betrayed. Mm -hmm. And why would he have to endure something that you and I listen? That I thought, example. I thought, can I can I can I be honest with you? Mm -hmm. I thought I was too good to, to have been betrayed mm -hmm. and done the way that I was done. Yeah. Why? Because I feel like I'm living all that I know to live. You know, I'm 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 being a good pastor, I'm doing everything. So I I'm thinking like God, how? Mm -hmm. Why me? Me? Right. <laughs> how, could, how could you possibly let this happen to me? Mm -hmm. Not me. Somebody mm -hmm. else, but not me. Mm -hmm. But listen, even going through that, it showed me that there was there was some immaturity there mm -hmm. because I thought right. that I was above that. Mm -hmm. There also was some pride there too right. because I thought I shouldn't have been going through what I was going through. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That whole process. And it took some time. It took some time, Shay. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would love to say that it that it ended in in six months, but it was a couple of years before yes. I got myself together. Mm -hmm. But in those couple of years, he taught me that I needed to want him more than I wanted things, mm -hmm. and, and that I had to exchange my will for his. So I thank God for the process now because I'm better than what I was. I'm better than I ever was. Mm -hmm. Trust and believe. I'm better than I ever was. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 
he he's able to grow you up in a way. If it had not been for that for that season of feeling like oh the, the 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 rug had been snatched from up under me, I never would have been made the way that I'm made now. Amen. Now I know how to endure. Amen. Now I don't have to go off and, and grab somebody. Right. Because he's graced me. Mm. Now I'm not saying that 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 that, that I'm, I'm beyond them that that could never happen. But what I am saying okay. is the difference is now, you know, I can think before reacting. Man. He he has grown me up Man. in so many ways, in ways that I didn't even know that I needed to grow up. My God, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! And I I I feel a grace tonight. Thank you, God, for for growth. Mm. For God settling some things. Mm. You've been confused. You've been frustrated. You've been wanting to I give up. You've been battle. wanting to walk away mm. because you feel like, where is God in this situation? I want you to understand. He's right there in the yes. situation with you. Yes. When you feel like he's the farthest is when he's called. The Bible says that he can't stand to hear a cry and not do anything. <laughs> right. Exactly. So you have to go through some things. Man. But they're all meant to grow you up into yes. him in all things, mm -hmm. which is the head, Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, your, your personality, it has to be shaped. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the way you handle things, the way you talk uh, uh, to people, the way you handle things, the way the way that you speak, the way that you, all of that has to change. Oh, my God. Go on. Jump back in. No, no go ahead. I'm. I'm, I mean, I'm done. I'm just listening. I'm just reminiscing and thinking about well, we how from. far we've come yeah. um, in this walk with God, how we are uh, at this point fearless uh, with standing in his <laughs> word and standing in ministry um, and being able to. We've had some things happen um, even after after being uh, mm -hmm. in pastor in Ohio. And we've had some things since we've moved to Florida and how God has brought us through those differently. Our reactions are different. Our actions are different. So we know that we've matured in God. So when we are sitting on winning in prayer on, um, on Friday night live or Bible study, those are though the words that, um, that we bring forth are for us first and they have been for us. And then we give them out. So we are not above anything happening or life happening to us, but we are able and mature enough in God's word to let that be our first response. See, my first response used to be, well, I'm going to take care of it. I can say what I want to say. That was my first response. But now when it happens is, okay, God, you, you know what's happening. You see what's happening. So what do I do? Show me what to do. Show me what to say. And that's how you know that you've matured in God because he's your first person you go to. He's the first person that you ask for guidance on. And so that's where I am in my walk. So as a person that disciples, that is if, if a situation comes up, I don't may not answer it right away. I may say, well, you know, let me let me pray. Let me get myself together before I say what I want to say, but let it be God's word. So as a discipler and as a as a leader and a pastor, I too have to on a daily basis take my will, ask the Lord to take my will, take my thoughts and replace them with his. And it is a daily um daily diet. It's something you have to eat every day. So we thank you guys for being on tonight. Yes. It is one hour and 26 minutes and we have been on here. We thank you for being here. If you'd like to give again, it's cash app dollar sign winning in prayer. Remember the announcements revival 25th through the 29th virtual six hour prayer event, May 14th. All of the events will be shown on the page on the winning in prayer page. So you can share those uh, flyers, share the advertisement. Uh, we are excited about those events. Don't forget that pastor has eBooks out there on amazon go to the go to amazon and buy the books under uh daryl johnson um they are the 30-day journal as well as help me with the title again i'm sorry what's the other one 
Acceptable prayer. Acceptable prayer, yes. <laughs> Acceptable prayer. They are out there. Podcast, Friday Night Live podcast is coming soon. So we thank you again for being with us tonight. We're going to pray and we're going to get off and we're going to see you on Wednesday. Um, if you have prayer requests, leave them in the um, comments and you know that we'll pray. So God, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for another chance to be in the midst of and in the presence of Lord, you, Lord. we thank you, God, for this, le this lesson Hallelujah. on discipleship, how we will continue to stand and endure and yes, grow yes, yes. and teach and be there for those that need us. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for another chance for yes, opening yes, our yes. eyes, for another chance to worship you, for <laughs> another chance to hear your voice. We ask, God, that you give us Hallelujah. rest on tonight, that you give us peace on tonight. Yes, give us yes, what to yes. say when to say how to say when to do it god we love you for love your you, sacrifice of your son your son that came and he died just for us while we were yet sinners you sent your son while you were yet sinners you sent your love to this earth and we thank you and praise you we won't take it for granted god we ask that your grace and mercy follow us that we would yes, give it out yes, the yes. same to those that we meet let us disciple the way that you disciple the Hallelujah. disciples and chose the 12 apostles <laughs> let us stay in the word let us fast and pray god we love you again mm. and thank you and until we see you all next time keep, keep winning, winning in, in prayer. prayer thank you lord glory to god